The Lord is our shepherd, I shall not want him, make an eye lie down in a green pasture, him let I beside still water them, him restore I soul, him let I in the path of righteousness, him name seek, yea, do I rasta go walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff them comforted I and I. Uno prepare a table before I in the presence of our enemy them. Uno anointed I head with uno oil. Me cup run it over. Surely goodness and mercy. I go follow I all the days of I Ivan. Me I go dwell in the house of the Lord God. Ja. Kada ma we gro ma be a tila eh. We two centuries meet in the name of the Most. I ja. I dey so ja ja dey. If ja ja never build up your house, the builder I go build it in vain. Same way if ja ja never watch upon your house, the watchman I go watch it in vain. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and then be safe. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Jah shall deliver him from all of them. And I give thanks. And I give thanks. Ah, my house of Bolisa, I done water. It was sick clear for. Akwe, 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 kaka. This is the Black Pot, aka Koko Shodemo, where we speak truth to power. And my name. Black Rastana in every traditional African home, there is a black pot, and each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something super sumptuous cooking, super nutritious, very good food, qualitative. Ingredients of so many different types, shapes, and sizes, aromas, and even flavors put aside all their differences and relocate into the black pot. And that collaboration gives us food. Now, the black pot and the ingredients do not even partake in the eating of the food, the enjoyment, but us. To keep body, bones, and flesh alive. Yet every time, the black pot and the ingredients would collaborate so selflessly in order to feed us. What can we learn from this selflessness? That's the lesson. How many of us plant trees knowing very well we have only a few years on earth and therefore we may not live long enough to benefit from the fruits and even the shade of the trees? How many of us would relegate ourselves to producing only tomatoes and onions because we want to be able to live long enough to enjoy our tomatoes and onions that only have a short gestation period? How many of us will remember the children we are bearing and therefore we want to leave something of a legacy for them and even their children's children by planting trees? We might not live long enough to benefit from the shades and the fruits of these trees but our children their children their children's children will come and enjoy the fruits of our labor are we jealous enough selfless enough to be able to uphold this this is the black pot and here we are only looking at the mindset of the average african now if the mindset is right every other thing will be righted individuals will build roads schools and hospitals without sitting back and waiting for the government to do everything. Individuals will take care of and safeguard things that have been put in place by the government rather than destroying them and turning around to look for newer ones. That happens when you have a, a very, very weak mindset. This is the black pot. And here we speak truth to power. We don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy. This is in the service of God and country. And remember that we are live on YouTube. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is called Black Empire Media. And black is spelled B-L-A-K-K. -K. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification button so that every time 
we come on, you'll be the first person to see us. And of course, from a few days time, from when we started up to this time, we have kept the faith with you. We have been very, very steadfast with speaking truth to power. If you truly love this, then make sure that you subscribe to our channel. And that is what it is. Tomorrow at exactly 5 p.m. Ghana time, we are going to be streaming live on YouTube. Spread the word. And it's going to be like that every other day. 5 o'clock on the dot, Ghana time, GMT. We will be live on your screens on YouTube. You will miss out if you don't subscribe to this channel. And it's going to be live. You can send in your comments. We will read out your comments and so on and so forth. In the interim, this is the Blackboard and we are supported by EZIT. Now, EZIT is I-S-I-T in spirit, in truth. Now, if your regular social media platform is only negative, full of negativity, we're talking about racism, violence, we are talking about nudity, we are even talking about nakedness. Why do you continue to belong there? When there is a better one, and that is easy. What does easy do for you? In spirit, in truth, you can go live, you can make audio and video calls at the same time. You can upload your videos and photos. And it's a platform that is full of positivity. It's modeled by Ghanaian engineers in America. Another reason you must support easy, download that for free from App Store and Google Play. And push your brand. Promote your business. Let other positive-minded people see your talent. And this is where you belong. I am on Is It. Are you there too? Connect with family and friends. Make memories. Lasting memories. Oh. It's just wonderful. On Is It. I am on Is It. Be on Is It. This is the Blackport. A.K.A. Kukushudomo. Where we speak truth to power. And today we have a number of things to look at. And I see North is going to dominate everything today i see not but in the interim shall we go to the church shall we go to the church now the very first story we are looking at today is rolling on the screen and it looks like we have to go to the church mm -mm -mm. nana ado begged me to forgive igp dampare reverend osu bempa who is reverend osu bempa oh that's him a man of god i respect him we went to the same school, Tia Amadea Secondary School, Kumasi, and we sat in the same classroom. Oh, yes. He was the leader of the SU, Scripture Union, on campus at Tia Amadea Secondary School. And in those days, I remember they were exorcising a lot of evil spirits. There was one Sunday I decided to walk around the school area, you know, from my dormitory. And there he was with the SU, praying and casting out demons and speaking in tongues. And as a Muslim growing up in a Muslim school, this sounded like all fake to me. Today, I know exactly what it is. He was a man who believed in the Bible and believed in the spirituality of the Bible. Reverend Isaac Owusu Bempa. He's a man a lot of Ghanaians love, a lot of Ghanaians believe, and a lot of Ghanaians would certainly say that this is a man who doesn't run away from what he says. So when it came out that there was a voice note, or better still a recording that was making the rounds on social media, that had him threatening the IGP, that had him say so many very, very terrible things on tape. And it came out also that he was denying his own voice. I was shocked because I've never known Reverend Owusu Bempa. To be a man who will shy away from his own utterances. Reverend Owusu Bempa was heard on tape. Saying that the IGP had maltreated him. And he went ahead to maltreat the IGP. In fact, to threaten the IGP. IGP Dampari. What happened? Why did Reverend Prophet Isaac Owusu Bempa say all those things on tape. Did he deny his own voice? Was he developing cold feet? Well, we have the details today. Come here. Watch me. Owusu Bempa claims content of viral video. This owns murder plot with Akufuado. 
Mm. Founder and leader of Glorious Word Power Miracles Church International, Bishop Isaac Ousu Ben Pass explained the content of a viral video clip that was circulated on social media last week. In an address over the weekend, he told his congregation that the voice and comments were made about two years ago in the aftermath of his brush with the law, which situation led to his arrest and arraignment before court. He, however, disowned one portion of the video or the audio where someone spoke about plotting with the president, Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, to commit murder at Tema. Beside that portion, he stated that he unequivocally claimed every other statement on the tape. The voice that I, I, I went with Nana Ado to commit murder is not my voice. But the voice about the IGP Dampari is mine. After our arrest, I made some comments about the tre more treatment I received. I am not above the law. And the law must deal with me when I am found guilty. He told the congregation. Dash. I'm glad he said that. Remember that was what we kept hammering on right here in the blackboard. Nobody is above the law and nobody is bigger than the truth. Remember also when Pa said, if they do not arrest this woman known as Agrada, nobody can arrest me in this country. That was quite arrogant. You don't tell the law what to do. The law knows exactly what to do as long as it is lawful. Osu Benpa was arrested. And then he fell ill whilst behind bars and was taken to the hospital. That was where all the problems started. We want to listen to Reverend Osu Benpa. Tell us in a very short statement and then we'll take it from there. Watch him address the congregation in church about this tape that is making the rounds so virally and about the IGP and Nana Kufuado. And on Yami voice. Now, that, that voice Yami. that said, I went with um, the president's Nana to Tutema and we killed somebody, it's a lie. It's but not me. IGP, Mr. Dan Pare, the end of Now, that voice, that voice that contains. The statement made about IGP, I am the one who said it. Tema, yechre ne ba yero, metena ha kan sembi. Now, after our arrest, I sat here and I made certain statements. Treatment ha, omudi me fem. And I told you about the treatment. Me mrum raso. Me mrum raso. I am not about the law. Odo mi ye nyamini pa ba yonu chre se, emra et nyamia. Now, although I am a man of God, it does not mean when I falter or I am found on the other side of the law, I should not be treated in accordance with law. But you see, you cannot, you, you cannot abuse the law and treat me in a manner which is unlawful and unconstitutional. See the hand of a goon, sir. Drip as you soon as I hank of a goose. Now it 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 hank of an abo baby a drip on as you eche. It has it na yeah the hank of you see me sono. Oh my hank of you charme and a me bleedy. Me busa in the pacron side to my miss I went fee. Still or send the mere be or so other from above. Now it does not pass the test of common sense that as a law enforcer. You would hang a person sit. Kana a bar hono. Ah, and crawl for eight. Eddie Kakamu to be a showman. A good tell to no. And no, Yantin was in the scene. And to me, you see me the before Obio Bam and Chain, Sabre Nimbia Mekasai. You could never be dear. Because me at the potty, I might always see a treaty, Miss Atasa Boa. Na a branti a woma boa nyamina meswa boa victor kusi boate nyamina meso ene boa wosa branti na wone dampare ene vice teho na me fre because chama wuntu misa me fre ah me fre o mi fri say you are my friend you are my brother me fre no more than ten times wa mfa afe o be pie fri fie ho well, Reverend 
Isaac Ousu Bempa. You heard him. Now he goes on to say that the president himself called him in the presence of the vice president and together they begged him and asked him for forgiveness. He wanted to go into the spiritual and deal with the IGP but because the president spoke and apologized on behalf of Dampari, he decided to let everything go. According to him, all these people were present at the meeting and they even knelt down to beg him. So he decided that it was over. He went ahead to say it was the reason the vice president came to his church. It was all to say, oh, let everything go. Forgive us and let us be friends one more time. Come here. It is interesting what Reverend Isaac Osu Bempa is talking about. Everybody knows the role he played in having Nana Akufu Ado become president. Everybody knows that he is a stalwart of this party in power. In fact, when the president was even given his vote of thanks, he mentioned Reverend Isaac Ousu Bempa when he won the elections. We all remember that. Is it true that Nana Akufuado and his vice president and Dampare and some other people begged Ousu Bempa and apologized to him for treating him this bad? If that is so, why did it not go viral? Why did they not put it out formally? Because this is the case. The man is saying that he was arrested. He's not above the law. They handcuffed him in the same hand that they were giving him drips. What happened to the other hand? What happened to his legs? Why do you handcuff a man on the same hand where the drip is supposed to go? Is it wickedness? According to him, the handcuff was so tight, it even cut him and he was bleeding. And he was so angry and mad, every other person would have been angry. And he spoke his mind. Anybody who came to him at the hospital, he told him how angry he was with the IGP. And even with Victor Kusibuatin, who presently is in hot waters for two faces, two mothers, two teen numbers, two different names, two different dates of birth. He said he's an ungrateful man. Why did the police not apologize to Reverend Isaac Ousu Bempa formally? That's arrogance. You arrested him, made everybody in the world see that you had subdued him with your power. Now you maltreated him whilst he was on his sick bed. You handcuffed him in the same hand where the drip was supposed to go. I don't have a problem if you are trying to stop him from running away. After all, he had threatened. In fact, his boys had gone to Agrada's house with guns threatening him. So the police was right to have handcuffed him so that at least he would not be able to run away or be rescued by his own tax. But should you handcuff him in the same hand that the drip was going in? Is that the only hand he has? To the point that the handcuff was so tight it cut him, blood was flowing? And when he inquired why he was treated like that, according to him in this tape, the police present at the hospital said, it's order from above that we should make it tight. We should let you feel the grip of the law. It doesn't help anybody in this country. He's a human being. He's a native of this land. He's a citizen of the nation. Reverend Isaac Ousu Bempa is not from Mars, neither is he from Venus. Now he has come out to say that the tape that is going around has my voice on it, but this portion is not my voice. I want to believe that. Why did the police treat him like that? Is the IGP going to man up enough to apologize to Reverend Isaac Ousu Bempa? That treatment was very animalistic, if it is true. 
Now, if you can go and kneel down and beg him behind closed doors, then you are a coward. It's like a man comes to insult me in public. Better still, strip me naked in public. And then when I am in the dark, he comes to clothe me. I don't need it. The night, the darkness of the night is already clothing me. The IGP must come out and apologize. The president should have ordered or advised the IGP to apologize formally to Reverend Isaac Ousu Bempa. And it's not because it's Reverend Isaac Ousu Bempa, even if it was Kwamina, a fishmonger at Labadi or Jamestown, he should have an apology. That is what we call democracy, civility. Reverend Isaac Ousu Bempa, I agree with you and I empathize with you. I'm happy that you said you've let everything go. I'm happy that you said this two years ago and you have healed. I'm glad. Back to the police. Will you apologize? I think you should. IGP, with all love and respect, I think you should be writing a formal apology to Reverend Isaac Osubempa. Compensate him for treating him like an animal. It doesn't make sense. Dash. Next story. Watch it. It says what? I see not vote buying recurrence. Why are we saying recurrence? This vote buying continues over and over. Kumeu, we saw people buying votes. We were told of vote buying. It's very sad. You see, you look down on the people when you buy votes. And those who take money in order to sell their bed rights is an insult. In America, in the early 1900s, black people were not allowed to vote. Black people had to stand on their two feet and fight so that they would have the right to vote. A lot of them were shot and killed. I can mention over 500 names. How black people have to fight for their rights in America just to be represented. Today, if we are able to have the rights to vote, we should respect that vote. It's a mockery, it's an insult that something that our predecessors fought so hard with their blood and their lives to give to us, we are selling it like pepper to politicians. It's sad. Early this morning at Asin North, as early as 5.30 a.m. And even earlier, as you can see in the pictures, people were out there to vote. They queued from 5.30 a.m. Watch it. I seen not by election. Queues form at 5.30 a.m. Ahead of crucial polls. Come here. Come here. Watch me. Voters in the Asin North constituency are demonstrating their eagerness to exercise their democratic rights. In fact, you have no democratic right if you sell your vote. That's not democracy. It's cheapness. It's selling your bet right. Ghana Web reporter present at the Methodist Primary One police station in Asin Briku captured images of voters forming queues as early as 5 a.m., even though polls formally open at 7 a.m. Nimatu Yakubu reports that as early as 5.30 a.m., election materials had already arrived at the particular polling station and preparations for the voting process were in full swing. Dash. We still need to educate our people on their birthright and on virtues and civility. A lot of our people think that voting is nothing. A lot of our people don't vote. They are ready to sell their vote to anybody who can pay. And we are hearing that there is serious vote buying. 
going on in that place. I want to say something before I go to that. Hear me now. If you can wake up as early as 5.30 a.m. to go and vote two hours before official voting time, why are you late for work? Why don't you use the same enthusiasm to push the nation forward? Is it only during voting time that you exercise your patriotism? Let's think about that. A lot of Ghanaians go to places late. Ghanaians and Jamaicans are never on time. In Jamaica, they say, soon come. In Ghana, they say, they come. No. And if a Jamaican tells you, soon come, please, if you have something to do, go out there and do it and return after five hours. He will not be there. If a Ghanaian tells you, or oh, just they come, no. Or one minute, please, that's five hours. If a Ghanaian tells you, oh, one minute and they come, five hours be that. Why are we not time conscious? But when it comes to things like this, we are more than on time. Is it that somebody has paid us to take our votes and they have ordered us to be on time? Are we robots? Do we respect ourselves? Are we ready to support our nation without anybody giving us some handouts so cheaply? But look what is happening there. Watch this. Can you see? I see not NPP buying votes for 200 cities, 300 cities. Police must act immediately. And this is the minority leader alleging. Come here. This is the minority leader. Right? Hmm. The minority leader, Dr. Kassel Atufosin, has alleged that the ruling New Patriotic Party, NPP, is engaging in vote buying in the ongoing Asin not by elections. According to him, he has come across at least 10 centers close to police stations where electorates were being given between 200 Ghana cities and 300 Ghana cities before they go and vote or after they have voted. Speaking to the media at one of the polling stations in Asinot, the majority leader called on the uh, Ghana police service to act immediately and arrest all the persons involved in the vote buying exercise. I think they wanted to say minority leader. I don't understand why the MPP would impoverish the people and come and give them money during the election day. That's the same thing I was going to say. You intentionally impoverish me. And when I'm so much reliant on you, you remote control me. It's an insult. It doesn't make sense. When will Ghanaians learn this common sense? Common virtues. Refuse the money. Make sure that you earn, earn your own money. Make sure that what is supposed to be given to you is given to you. So that you don't have to wait for them during elections to come and give you peanuts. It's an insult. It is so sad. It is so shameful. And we are asking the police to immediately ensure that within a five kilometer radius, nobody is allowed to be sharing money of this magnitude. I am shocked with what I have seen here. Our democracy is dying. NPP is killing our democracy. They have Changed it to monocracy. I have seen 10 different houses where they are sharing the money. I can take you there. They are sharing 200 Ghana cities and 300 Ghana cities. It's a shame. Dash. What is happening to our democracy? They go out there giving money to the same people they have impoverished. They go out there insulting the same people how can you be left around with nothing good by this dirty government but when they need your votes they quickly come to you and you also agree it's like a man who disrespects his woman so much the woman only comes in handy when he's on heat then he runs after her and then he's talking. 
Right after that, he goes back to his own old days. Shall we be quick enough to reject some of these things? It's an insult to our democracy, an insult to our very being and our very livelihood. When we return, we have more. Hey! Why <laughs> This is the Black Pot, aka Coco Show. And remember, we are sponsored by Is It I S I T in Spirit in Truth. Now, if your regular social media platform is all negative, you know where to go. Download that from App Store and Google Play. And of course, Is It simply means in Spirit in Truth. Connect with family and friends, and yes, you are on a positive platform. Yeah, go live. You can make video and audio calls all for free. I am on Is It, and I know how I'm benefiting. Now, this is where every positive mind is. And this uh, is an app modeled by Ghanaian engineers in America. Reason you must support is it. Come here. This is the Blackport, aka Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. Next story. Now, the next story is pumping up. What does it say? Watch it. It says what? I see enough political prostitutes. Wow. <clears throat> political prostitutes. Amenyosam, Amenyosem Gentra. Amenyosem Gentra. If you translate into Chi. I see not political prostitute. I see not for Amenyosem Gentra. Who is that political prostitute? Oh, this guy. Oh, really? It's a political prostitute. Wow. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Now I understand why it's like that. Charles Opoku is a political prostitute. And this is Sami Jemfi speaking. Run it. He says, the National Communication Officer of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC Sami Jemfi, has refuted assertions that his party regretted not making the candidate of the new patriotic party, NPP, Charles Opoku, the candidate in the Asin not by elections. According to him, Charles Opoku only joined the NPP after the NDC rejected his proposal to be their candidate for the Asin not by election. Speaking to journalists at one of the polling stations for the ongoing by election, Sami Jemfi described the NPP candidate as someone who does not have values and cannot be trusted. Wow. Charles Opoku is a political prostitute. He came to us to tell us to make him our candidate and drop Kwesin. But we told him, we, the NDC, don't work like that. So he should join the queue. I can give you WhatsApp charts with our executives. That is a political prostitute. No principles, no convictions, no track record. You don't even vote here. And you want to become an MP? He said in chief. He said that the NDC has no regrets about making the ousted MP for Asin not James Jachi Kwesi. They are candidate because nobody deserves to represent the people of Asin not more than him. So that's the political prostitute. And then the unpatriotic equation they are both not worth it for now but my brother and my sister Jackie Quaison lived in a, in Canada for 47 years according to Aloté Jacob 
And he was so proud of his Canadian citizenship, he didn't want to lose it for anything. Two times, according to Alote Jacobs, he tried to circumvent the rule of law in the NDC to represent the people still holding on to his Canadian citizenship. And Alote Jacobs said no. He wanted to stand for MP. He got the opportunity. He had to renounce his Canadian citizenship and hold only the Ghanaian citizenship, something that I so much uphold in high esteem. He started the process of renouncing. And then, when it was time to vote, he won. But somebody quickly reported him, blew the whistle, and boom, they realized that at the time that he ticked that box, that he had only one citizenship, he was lying. That's perjury. He lied to the people of Ghana. Yes, you have started the process, but it had not been concluded. When you strip a woman naked, the action is not complete until you go further. And as to what feather means, you and I know. You can't strip a woman naked and go out there and be hitting your chest and saying that, oh, you made love to her. No, sir. Stripping naked is different from the action itself. You started the procedure. You didn't end it. You take that. You had ended it. It's perjury. I'm glad the courts are looking at it. I don't like unpatriotic people. People who don't see this country as number one. Ghana first. If you want to host a, hold a political position in this country, you must uphold those virtues. If you want to be Canadian, it's unto you. Go and be Canadian. But now I don't know whether I would like an unpatriotic guy or a prostitute. They are both not worth it. This man went here. He wasn't given the opportunity. He went to the other part. If this is true, then where do you really belong? That means the people of Asin not are actually cursed. You have a prostitute and an unpatriotic guy. And they are the people that you are voting for. What is the track record of Jackie Quayson? Has he been able to do something for Asin not? Are you ready for him? Are you ready to stand by him? Well, so it is a contest between the prostitute and the unpatriotic guy. We shall see who wins. This is the Blackpot, aka Kukushunimo. I remember from tomorrow, we're going to be live on YouTube at exactly 5 p.m. That is when all the action begins. Remember to send in your messages, subscribe to our channel, Black Empire Media, where we do it live together for 60 minutes. Until then, when we return, we have more. Hey! Woyo! This is the Black Pot, aka Koko Shonam, and here we speak truth to power. Next story. Looks like we are still in Asin, right? Asin not. Watch it. Asin not imposter soldier appears with weapons. Ish. So there's a prostitute right there at Asin not. We also have the unpatriotic guy there at Asin not. Now there is an army imposter with weapons. Is it true? Hey! Come here. Mm. Is that him? My God! Arrested by the police. So look at this guy arrested here. He's fully dressed like a soldier. And he has so much around him. 
Can we get the details? Hey! I see not by election, military imposter arrested with weapons. Look at the weapons. Look at the weapons. Where was he taking this to? What was he going to do with this? One man. The Ghana Police Service in the Asin North constituency has arrested an unidentified man dressed in military uniform and purporting to be with the Ghana Armed Forces. The arrest comes after the security forces were tipped off about his suspicious behavior as voting commenced at Asin North. According to a 3news.com report, the military imposter was arrested with some weapons in his possession. He was quickly questioned and arrested by the police who have sent him to a nearby station for interrogation. Meanwhile, there is heavy security presence at Asin North as constituents head out in their numbers to cast their ballot in a keenly contested by-election between the new Patriotic Party NPP parliamentary candidate Charles Opoku and James Jachikwesen of the NDC. Is these people the prostitute and the unpatriotic guy? Mm. So somebody has been arrested. What was he there with the weapons for? These are the people who make Ghana politics very bloody. Every now and then, we hear people going around with weapons sponsored by politicians to intimidate people. They love political power more than the lives of the people. I hope and pray that the police will deal with this guy very, very well. That the police would make sure that this matter goes to court, is dealt with properly, and whatever punishment is supposed to be meted out will be meted out adequately. We can't afford to lose people every now and then. In the last elections, we saw how many people were killed, sacrificed, so some dirty politicians can come into power. Why do we have to do this to our citizenry? Police, Thank you so much for your heavy presence in the area. But again, hurry up and come back to your post. Because armed robbers in those areas that you have left are also going to have a field day. Now that you have all concentrated and conglomerated at Asinot, you have made other places deserts for a walk by armed robbers. It's the blackboard a.k.a. Kukushonamo, where we speak truth to power. Come here. Our final story for the day talks about Mahama, right? Mahama tipped to win 2024 election. I think you don't need a prophet to tell you this. Many Ghanaians are hoping that this economic crunch, this dirty government in power, will go away. That one is 100%. But as to who will replace this dirty government in power, a lot of Ghanaians don't care. Anybody could come in there. They don't want to see this dirty government in power. Now the key people who are contesting Mahama in the upcoming elections would certainly be the NPP and not any other party. The other parties don't seem to have the muscle, unfortunately. So therefore, who would the NPP be presenting for the tango in 2024? Is it Kennedy Japan? Is it Mahmoudou Baomea? Or is it Alan Cheremantin? Adru Misu. Adru Misu. That's what he says. Whoever is coming in there. There is a group in the UK that says that Mahama is most likely to win the election in 2024. And if he does win, he will become a president who lost and came back again. First time in our history. Fitch Solutions. This is not the first time we're talking about Fitch. Fitch Solutions. Who are they? They have come with the Fitch Ratings. 
Watch. NDC most likely to win 2024 general elections. Fitch predicts. A UK-based research firm, Fitch Solutions, has projected that the opposition National Democratic Congress is most likely to win the 2024 general elections. According to the latest assessment by Fitch on June 2, 2023, titled Positive Shift in Ghana's Political Risk Profile Following IMF Program Approval. It said the projection comes after the economic hardships Ghanaians have had to face under the current administration led by President Akufuado. Fitch also added that the current government's approach to tackling corruption remains a source of worry for Ghanaians. Yes, we are all disappointed. When Nana Akufuado was coming, we heard he was a no-nonsense man. A lot of people were going to suffer for being corrupt. But it looks like he's one of the most corrupt guys. He surrounded himself with family and friends who are most corrupt. Are you not shocked? This was not what we envisaged. He brought in an OSP, but nothing seems to really be happening until this young guy took over and is also trying to do something. But is it enough? He said, turning to the 2024 general election, we believe that the NDC is most likely to win. The rapid deterioration of economic conditions in 2022 and the slow progress in the fight against perceived corruption. In a July 2022 Afrobarometer study, 85% uh, of Ghanaians believe the government was doing a poor job in tackling corruption, will exacerbate anti incumbency sentiment among the electorate. Mm -hmm. So, this is clear. In addition, the IMF has voiced concerns over President Nana Adodankwa Akufu Ado's flagship free senior high school program introduced in 2027, labeling it as poorly targeted. Potential modifications to the program in order to rein in uh, spending would weaken the NPP's campaign agenda, increasing the chances of an NDC win. Pass of the assessment said. However, Fitch asserted, asserted that the likely change in government will not have any effect on the country's IMF program since the NDC itself has sought assistance at the fund during its tenure. Dash. So that, 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 that's what Fitch is talking about. NDC will win. And if NDC likely wins, the IMF program will not change. NDC itself has gone for the IMF loans. But Mahama says this should be the last time. Is he going to keep it? Politicians are good at changing. Mahama has been busily going around talking about corruption. Is he a changed man or is he hungry for power? Time will tell. If I were you, President Mahama, come here. If I were you, I would look at the legacy first. If I were you, I would be looking at what I can leave behind and not what I can loot. That is what the nation will remember you for. Many people don't care. They say, when I'm dead, I'm gone. It doesn't matter what happens behind me. If you do that, you are selfish. Your children will bear the brunt of your carelessness and foolishness, whoever you are. Do them a favor. Yes, you are dead and gone. Even if you don't believe in the afterlife and hell and heaven, your children will bear the brunt. Imagine your children walking around and people are saying, oh, that's the corrupt president's children. Like we've been hearing in other countries and even in Ghana. Do them a favor. Leave the country a good legacy. The same good legacy that Kwame Nkrumah and the rest left for us. That today we are proud to say that we are Ghanaians. Politicians take this advice only when they are in opposition. But when they get into power, they don't remember that there's anything called legacy. A good legacy to be left behind. Today, nobody talks about Kotoka except for negative things. Nobody talks about some other such people in other African countries. Their children are not even proud to come out and say, we are the children of this villain. Recently, J.A. Ankara. Her daughter came out and was blah blabbing. The whole nation shut her up and said, Ah, you are better off 
not even revealing your identity as a daughter of this villain, this coward. That's how it is. So whatever you're doing, remember that you are leaving children behind. You are leaving family behind. Let your name be mentioned and people will shiver and be proud that they would have loved to be part of that family. They will gravitate towards that family. They would want to marry people from that family. That your name is mentioned and people are getting favor in your name because they belong to your family. But not when your name is mentioned and it's so nauseous, smelling all over the place, everybody wants to run away. I don't know how many people are listening to this. But if politicians will listen to this, we will have a better nation. My name is Black Rasta. And I want to say thank you so much. Remember tomorrow, uh, what day is tomorrow? Wednesday. We are going to be live on YouTube from 5 p.m. Ghana time, GMT, live for 60 minutes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and that's it there, Black Empire Media. Black is spelled B-L-A-K-K. -K. Click on the notification button so that you'll be notified every time we come live. We shall read your questions and interact with you and make this show the show that you've always loved to have. It's been the Blackport, aka Kuku Show No More. And thanks so much to Izet. We love you. We appreciate you for supporting us. When we return tomorrow at 5 p.m., we have yet another set of salvos to make our nation better. Hey! Wayo! <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.